Compared to everyone else on Liquid, Skull sticks out as the odd man out, while Nav, Twist, Kadian, and Yakinder are all highly esteemed players with accolades to match, Skulls is relatively unproven on the tier 1 stage. Although it is evident that he holds a lot of potential mechanically, many were wondering how he truly fits into this new Liquid roster, both role-wise and being able to keep up with the rest of his talented teammates. But I think that this should be the least of the concerns, as Skulls has great intuition when it comes to his teammates and for team play. That might sound obvious in a professional setting, but even in a pug environment with more than 100 ping, Skulls prioritizes teamwork above all else. Our teammates might not be face to level 10s of professionals, but we can all learn from how Skulls is able to utilize his teammates presence and firepower in a non baity way. I need to get something out of the way. This face in match took place on November 26th, and since then, there have been several updates altering the strength adjustments of nades. Regardless of the actual content of these changes, these updates have seemed to make nades in prior demos wonky to say the least. The T's and CT's have now become professional wiffle ball pitchers. Do your best to ignore that fact, even though it's hard. But back to the topic at hand. How does Skulls incorporate his teammates into his playstyle? Skulls has incredible angle awareness, where he constantly plays around his teammates line of sight to cover their bases and to lock down potential flanks. On the T side, Skulls will often play Palace, where he will need his teammates to take initiative and to draw the CT's attention, especially without the jungle or stair smokes. On the first pistol round, we can see a standard setup where Skulls will wait for CT Palace aggression, but as soon as his teammates get an opening pick and are the main focus of the CT's attention, Skulls will rush out and miss a million shots on the CT. But even without getting the kill, the distraction caused by Skulls opens up his teammates to take even more space on site, which ultimately leads to the bomb plant on pistol round. Two rounds later, Skulls would do the exact same thing, except this time, as he goes to clear out Palace, his teammate dies in connector, which leaves the CTs to eye down the last team mid. But because of his teammate's death, Skulls can reasonably assume that the jungle and stairs player would put their attention towards mid so he gives a very cursory check towards the stairs and connector area before swinging out, getting a free kill on the CT and opening up the site for the T's. But angle awareness is not just limited to the opening phases of the game. In post plants, many players and pugs will just play for themselves, which often leads to awkward situations where angles are doubled up on, no one is watching the flank, or someone is getting way too aggressive. There always seems to be a way that your team loses. But what Skulls does instead is that he makes sure that all angles are covered. Playing from the powerful post plant position of Palace, Skulls' top priority is to stay alive. So at first, he watches for his flank. But the CT soon reveal themselves to be connector and A main, indicating to Skulls that there's not going to be a Palace flank. But rather than continuing to play his life and bait his teammates like the rest of us probably would, he turns his attention back to sight, where he watches for the CT A main to pop his head up on the headshot angle. He does this because his teammates are bunkering down with a crossfire from CT and Shadows, which covers the rest of the site attack. And with this rock solid post plant position, the T's quickly win the round, even if the T Shadows dies. But Skulls doesn't need to use his teammates to make plays, he can also facilitate strats. Palace serves as a great place to lurk, which can be incorporated in strats to pincer the CT's on A site. On round 9, three T's are taking mid control with the intent to end on A where Skulls and his teammate are Palace and A main respectively. The A main player dies early due to gang violence, which leaves Skulls alone to try to open up A site for the mid players. However, since there is a molly on balcony, Skulls is delayed so he decides to draw attention first with nades, where he returns to a familiar position and grabs the kill onto the CT headshot angle. With this, the T swarm in through connector, killing the second CT and winning the round with Skulls opener. However, despite this continuous success, you can't just play one spot for the whole game, especially in a pseudo lurker role. Occasionally, Skulls will go with his team mid to assist with the push, where he will often throw smokes for his team, denying not only sightlines towards his teammates, but also hiding the fact that he is not lurking in Palace. Even with the extreme mid presence, the CT still put 3A in case of a potential attack from Palace, giving up mid for free. Skulls ends up pushing Connector for a lurk, which ends up getting him killed, but with that last bit of space provided, the T's are able to recuperate for a B push. But even if the CT's choose to focus on the mid threat, 
just having someone as proactive as Skulls is a great asset to any team, even if he looks a little lost. But what about the CT side? When holding down sights or going for a mid play, you won't necessarily have another player to make plays with. While Skulls is not conditioning the T's or calling for stacks on his site, his microplays and communications are on point. This is reflective in how often he calls for double swings, or whenever he times his peak with another teammate. Let's start with the double swings. Skulls will always try to take the 2v1 against the T as much as possible. Even when the T's are functionally on a save, Skulls will still call for a double swing to preserve the weapons and minimize losses for the CTs. Or on round 21 where he makes sure to peek with his teammate on the T Tetris and does not thirst after the kill, instead allowing his teammate to get the easy frag without much risk. Of course, you can't always get a double swing, especially when your teammates are playing far away from you. But even setting up small crossfires can net insane value. Round 18 is an eco for the CTs, and after jump spawning ticket booth for a bit, Skull spots the T's A main, where they throw a molly to flush him out. After a bit of time, he eventually kills the sandwich player with some AD strafes, but then is able to net a second kill onto T as they were preoccupied by a potential connector player. Okay, maybe this isn't the best example since the T kind of bought it out, but we can see the same concept in round 15, where Skulls finds himself preparing for a mid push as the solo A player. He trades out his connector player, but realizes a T is incoming from A main. Skulls chooses to back up into the jungle area instead of stairs, and fully commit to the duel with the A main player, and putting his full trust that the window player will watch his back, and the cat player will stop any ensuing T's. His trust is rewarded when the cat player pushes up and catches the connector player, and although the window player dies, Skulls quickly gets his trade, and the CTs win the round. However, despite all of this, don't be afraid to take risks and go for solo plays. Here, Skulls smells some egos and gets a few frags before dying. It's always good to mix up strats to throw off your enemies and honestly, just to have fun. Even if playing team-based Counter-Strike is objectively the most efficient way to win, throwing in a few highlight-worthy rounds is ultimately what is going to keep you going in CS. And that's all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys very soon.